Hello and welcome to the presentation for our Autumn 2021 New Introductions. I got the year right this time. Oh, thank <laughs> goodness for that. Is that. It feels like take six. I, 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 because of uh, the Olympics 2020 and, and uh, Euros 2020, I quite forgot what year we're in or I where know, I am. It, it, it's been like that all year. I mean, it has gone really, really quickly. And I know that's a cliche because every year it, everyone says it's yes. gone so quickly. But this has just been an extraordinary It has. It's billet. galloped on. Uh, we were intending to release this in the first part of September but instead we thought no let's sensibly we'll leave it to the 22nd yeah. which is today but it's also the autumn equinox now. is it so autumn starts what today so if you look out the window right this minute leaves start <laughs> yes, falling immediately well, no leaves on the trees and it's already galloping on to some ridiculously low number of weeks to Christmas <laughs> It's all right, I'm sorry I mentioned that, but it, it's true. Yes, Santa will soon be squeezing yeah. his fat bottom down the chimneys. He will. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, um, we will be showcasing three new pieces that yeah. uh, Matt, Matt has sculpted for Autumn 2021. However, before that, um, we'd like um, to do a small presentation on our Born to be Wild series. Wouldn't yeah. The Born to be Wild series is something we've muted particularly in the last couple of presentations. And what that actually is, or to put some explanation of what we want it to be, is really bringing the collective of the smaller pieces that I've sculpted. And by smaller, I don't necessarily mean by size, I also mean by type. So in other words, a cub or a baby of some description, a little bit like the baby orangutan or the bear cub. Now, the reason we didn't make a, a, a larger, I guess, introduction before is because I felt I hadn't actually sculpted mm. enough pieces. Yeah. Well, with this presentation, I've got another two, so it makes it a little bit yeah. more obvious. More a cohesive collection. Yeah, so, so before we start wittering on, what we thought we'd do mm -hmm. is we'd jump to a micro presentation, yep. Dan, in this same box, <laughs> with Dan and I with the pieces that, that are starting that ball rolling, yeah. so to speak to give you an idea immediately of what we're talking about, which we are sort of uh, collectively putting together as, again, the Born to be Wild series. So, without further ado, okay, um, yep. press that button, mate. Oh, the magic button. Yeah. Oh, it's still there. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, three, two, one, go. Well, hello folks, welcome to our micro presentation. And it is a micro presentation. Yes. There's no room to move at all, is there, Dan? No, literally. No, I mean, the hips are glued to this pillar. The broom cupboard no, hasn't grown it hasn't. since we last used it. No, and no at shoes all. just to fit into frame. <laughs> because the top of that camera look is hitting me right on the head. Is why I'm wearing this hat. <laughs> so you don't e your head. Absolutely. Either way, this is, the, this is very important because when we're talking about Born to be Wild, it's one thing to describe what we mean, but it's mm. much better to see the pieces we're talking about in the flesh or in three dimensions, so to speak. And this is why we've put these pieces together. This won't be it. Indeed, after this presentation, there'll be another two additions to it. Mm -hmm. Indeed, when I first started sculpting the piece, I had no idea, no notion that it was going to form the part of a collection. It's very much an accidental yes. collection. The first piece being the um, baby orangutan, which I sculpted to go with its largest sitting counterpart, an adult orangutan. But it's developed. I've used artistic license clearly with different species or different animals. You know, the, the, they are a lot larger than each other, but I've wanted to create a balance there so they can sit together nicely and create an aesthetic. So I'm very conscious of that. So when I'm adding with the new pieces particularly, particularly to this one, which I won't say too much about now, going forward, it'll make sense. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And um, this is probably the first time many of you have seen these pieces together as a, as a collection. And uh, as such, I will be uh, producing some points of sale for the shops. So uh, if they wish mm -hmm. that they can present them as we uh, have here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Like Before we go, and uh, the eagle-eyed of you have probably spotted her already. Ah, and I do say yes. her because um, her name is Alba. 
and she's based on an actual albino orangutan. In fact, I think the only one ever to have not necessarily existed, but the only one ever to be found. Absolutely. Yes, and um, she, she was um, basically she comes on the back of Snowflake here, uh, which was released early in the year, and he was the only known albino gorilla. I know it's strange, yes. isn't it? Yeah, and um, two examples she will only. be released as an autumn yep. uh, new introduction, so, so she should be available in the shops um, pretty sharpish. Pretty sharpish. Yes. And I think this uh, hmm. goes straight. Well, we need to go straight into yes, presentation into number one. Yes, the next presentation, which yeah. will be of Matt's panda cub. Yeah. And uh, obviously falls in with the Born to Wild series. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I have actually moved. The have magic you moved the bottom back. down? You just watch your knuckles. All right. okay? okay. All right. So here we go. I've got All it. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one, go. Hello folks, welcome to the presentation for the Panda Cub. Now the Panda Cub is a piece I have deliberately sculpted, really, to go with the brown bear. And I've, I've thought about this in advance because not only do I want it and the brown bear to form part of the Born to be Wild series that we've been discussing, but also a set of three bears, or could be a set of three bears. Now it's a standalone piece, Obviously, someone could buy this if they want just a panda. But it could sit with a brown bear, which looks to the right. This clearly sits looking at you. Which obviously means that if I were to sculpt a polar bear, which again is taller, like the brown bear, which sits about there, that would look to the left. So you have a set. So I'm thinking forwards in that way as well. Now from a sculptural perspective, again, it's a tricky one, this, because when you're looking at a piece, even though it's small and it doesn't look that complicated, it has distinctive markings. It has a mask, a panda. I know a leopard has spots, but they're not right on its face, right round its eyes. Which means that normally, when I'm sculpting a piece, I'll put the pictures of the clay out very, very early on Facebook. But in this instance, I thought, well, no, it's, it's so far out to our presentation, I'll leave it a lot, lot closer, because I didn't want you guys to have to fill in the gaps, so to speak. So yeah, tricky to that perspective, and I think it is one of those pieces that really comes to life when it is painted. So I hope you guys like what it looks like. Anyway, from here, we're gonna to go to Dan's 360 film that he's already prepared earlier, folks. Okay, bye. Hello and uh, welcome back. Um, I hope you enjoyed Matt's uh, presentation of the Panda Cup. 
the Panda Cup. The Panda Cup, yeah. and uh, of course, the Panda Cup uh, will now become part of our Born to Born Be Wild to series. Be yes. Yes, and um, so it, it's um, obviously that, that series is getting larger and larger. As this, Ironically, as this presentation <laughs> goes yeah, on. Yeah, well, well, but, uh, well, Dan and I felt with this presentation we had to sort of. Um, bring it collectively together yeah. because it is an accidental collection. It's a collection that was born out of basically every time I sculpted a baby piece, it sold very well, which is marvellous, but also the demands for other pieces in that range. So literally by demand, so I sculpted another one, but now it's got to the, the, the point where there are enough, if you like, that it represents a collection of sorts. So that's what we decided to and do. And they go across all the species, don't yeah. they? So they're not just So I will, I will to... continue that range anyway. Yes, and as you can see, we do have one of the Born to Wild series here, Baby O, yeah. but there is a reason for that. There is indeed, reason. Anna, yes. there is a reason. Yes. <laughs> now I sculpted this piece about a couple of years ago, and it's very much a, a, a very important piece, this one, because it's a collaboration directly with a charity organisation, and in this instance, the Jim Cronin Memorial Fund. Now, I know many of you are aware of it because you have indeed purchased the piece, which is fantastic. But just to put a bit of background on what that is. Now, Jim Cronin himself, he, he started Monkey World. Now, we're all very familiar with Monkey World. Yeah, Monkey World in, in Dorset. In Dorset. Yeah. And also, the plight to the campaign that they've always represented, which is basically rescuing primates from all over the world. Yes. Now anyway, to roll it forwards, unfortunately, Jim passed away, unfortunately, didn't yeah, he? About 2007. 2007 yeah. Now usually when you have the, I suppose, the, 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 the main figure of an organisation passes away, it normally it ceases to continue, but that's not the case. Not the case in this instance. No, his his wife, uh, yeah. Alison, has taken over that's the range. Right. She was very much part of it anyway. I think they both received MBEs in two thousand and six. Yeah. Um, so so she 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 taken over the range and, and she she um, founded the uh, Jim Cronin Memorial Foundation in his in his honour in his name to obviously continue the good work that he had he had started. That's right. Yeah. And anyway, this piece um, came about because I, I also have been talking to a lady called Shelley Fletcher. Now, Shelley Fletcher herself is the operations manager for Monkey World, mm. but also the chief executive now of the Jim Cronin Memorial Fund. But before I knew her as that specifically, she was looking at edge pieces, specific ones, clearly, to sell as part of the, the gift shop, the shop at Monkey World but itself is a source of revenue to continue helping primates. So roll that on again. A couple of years ago, I contacted Shelley and suggested the possibility of, of sculpting a piece where a proportion of the sales goes to that charity. And of course, she was, she was really, really happy with it, which, and I was as well, because it, it's nice. It is really good to be able mm -hmm. to make something sit out of the door and obviously, you know, give towards something. Yeah. However, it, oh, go on. it it's done fantastically well, hasn't it, Dan? Yes, and, and, and if you if you have bought one of these pieces, as as you'll know, <laughs> yeah. uh, it is a, a numbered uh, edition. So yeah. each piece has its individual number, and Matt um, hand signs each piece Sign and underneath. the yeah. certificate. As you can see, that's Matt's uh, signature there, and um, it will have this one hasn't, but it will have the individual number there, which will match uh, the piece. That that gives it a nice. Um, nice provenance and obviously helps explain um, you know why it is why it is numbered as you can see you've got the Jim Crane and more of and also going back to the number Dan it's not a specific number out of anything it's not a limited edition it's an ascending number which yeah. means that it, it, it in theory you know if we could make it for a long long time but that's great because what happens is it means that we could continue to give to the Jim Crone Memorial Fund now as it stands it, it was it was it was fantastic to speak to Shelley to tell her what we'd actually made for the uh, yes and because because charity of, yeah because of of um, of COVID um, obviously we have been given the money to charity but we haven't had the opportunity nope um, 
to to advertise the fact of how, how much we have no, actually um, at all. Uh, donated and this donation is not just from us obviously it's it's you out there the stockists and uh, yeah. the members of public who actually bought the piece so you know it, it's it's you guys as well it's you know it's a big thanks to, to you guys so so Matt how, how much is it that we have uh, actually donated well so far and I, I need to look at the figure again because it is it's quite, <laughs> so far we have literally handed over to the Jim Cronin Memorial Fund a figure of forty-one thousand eight hundred and ninety-four pounds. That's not too shabby, is it? No. No, and, no. <laughs> and all that has gone Absolutely. obviously to help um, primates uh, who are in danger, and um, obviously to help because yep. because obviously it's not just rescuing them; um, it, it, they've got to look after them for the rest of their lives. So, uh, so that, that you know, and, and also and also the lot the foundation is set up to to make people aware of it as well. I think that's always the yeah. problem, isn't it? Rescuing something, if you're involved in some, is, 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 is not straightforward, but you know of it. But the problem is the larger community don't know, that in the no. public don't and know. I think um, what, what I'm going, we're going to do now yeah. is I'm just going to have, have a brief uh, montage of pictures of, uh, you know, about the um, Jim Cronin Foundation and of, of the primates that they have res rescued, just to give it a bit, a bit of context. But also, um, I will put links on, uh, on yeah. there for the Jim Cronin Foundation, and there's loads of information on there, including videos. I think there's, they've got a YouTube channel as well. And so, yeah, you, you can find out for yourselves exactly what, what uh, all yeah. the great work that they've done. Absolutely. So I think we'll, we'll, we'll jump to that, that montage and we'll see you back in, in a few minutes. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. Okay. Magic button Magic time, button time I think. Brilliant. Okay. Three, two, two one, one go. go. Hello folks, and I hope you liked the montage. It was very heartfelt really. I mean, you, you can only, only looking at the pictures themselves, or never mind us waffling on about the plight when you actually physically see the pictures of those, those are oh, the real primates, the actual ones that have been rescued or yeah, it just smashes it home. But also it? they're the ones, that, those that are yeah. the primates that have been rescued. So it's obviously that their future is looking but, bright. So. Particularly little Nari, now Nari, as you look to the pictures, is the chimp that was disfigured. Well, that's a huge story in itself. I mean, Jim and Cronin and his wife in about 2003 were trying to get that particular uh, chimp rescued after you know seeing her in a, a circus of all things. And after literally fighting with uh, government officials and bureaucracy, it took 15 years to bring Nari over. So, it, so Nari, you see there, that's literally been an effort that's been going over about a couple of decades, really. And yeah, so that just yeah. demonstrates the conviction of the foundation, folks. But yes, so 
moving on yep. then, which yep. of course we have to do. Yes, moving on, uh, we, we are going on, on to another presentation. Yep. Uh, this one will be uh, the baby chimpanzee. The baby chimpanzee, and we haven't planned it like this folks, it's just <laughs> no. it's just how it, it is, but yes, the baby chimp Baby next. chimpanzee, so, so um, I might as well let you explain in the next presentation. Ab then, absolutely. So, so let's uh, go for the magic the button. The button, time and button. Okay. okay. One, two, two three, three, go. go. Hello folks, welcome to the presentation for the baby chimpanzee. Now this piece I've needed or wanted to sculpt for quite a while, having sculpted the baby orangutan already and indeed the baby gorilla. So first and foremost, I deliberately wanted to sculpt it to go with that set. And also, as we mentioned earlier, the Born to be Wild set. So indeed, it sits with any of the other pieces. But when I was actually sculpting it or roughing up how to do the little chimp, I thought to myself, well, because they're, they're quite animated, they have a lot of human characteristics of the way they move, the way they move their hands. I thought, well, it does lend itself very well to the old Japanese proverb of the three wise monkeys, which meant really, I thought, well, okay. And as an experiment, this was at this stage, I'll just try one, I'll just pick one, and which I did which in this case was here no evil. But I didn't just want to do it as here no evil in a literal sense, which we'll discuss later in the, in the presentation. I wanted to bring something different in there. So this is here a little. However, I wanted to sculpt it so that even if it's part of a set of three, it could also stand alone. You don't need to buy the other two. You won't need to buy another two. It could be just an inquisitive or whimsically humoured, charismatic little chimp. And that's what I wanted to achieve. I suppose from this point, really, the best way to see it in a three-dimensional sense is with Dan's 360 film that he's already finished earlier. So off we go, folks. <laughs> Hello folks and welcome back. I hope you enjoyed uh, Matt's presentation of the baby chimpanzee. I certainly did. He's a, he's a very charismatic little fellow. And uh, I bet you're wondering why he's still here. Pray tell. <laughs> I will. You will. <laughs> <laughs> well, as Matt probably touched upon uh, in his um, presentation, he is based on the, the three wise monkeys, the Japanese proverb, 
indeed. He, did, he is, uh, and um, there is three of them. He is the first that we've done. However, he comes, I think, second in the uh, the line in the proverb, which the is Doors. see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. Yeah, but there is a bit more of a tale to that. <laughs> that there is a tale. A <laughs> tale being no tale, because of course three wise monkeys have tails. These are not monkeys before someone says, they're not monkeys. No, they're right, they're not. They're great apes. So it's it's a play on it, isn't it? These are apes. Now, on the second point, uh, what I wanted to do is take the, the in the literal sense, the common version or the common view of what the three wise monkeys look like, which is basically see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. But change them slightly so they have a little bit more personality or maybe more of a, a, a modern whimsical take on it now what i mean by that is with this particular piece which is in theory second in the lineup in in terms of yeah. how it's spoken this one even though it's here no it's more here a little here a little being if you imagine you've got a person that knows he shouldn't be listening knows he shouldn't really be prying into whatever he's listening to, but he's not sure, so he's unsure. Hence the reason why, so in other words, his eyebrows are there, but he's trying to listen. And it's a bit like he doesn't really want to, or shouldn't, but he wants to. He's very cheeky. It acts right, so mm -hmm. it's a little bit like that. And obviously with the other two, I want to score those in a similar way. Now obviously, how do I project that over? How do I suggest what the other two are going to look like as part of the three? Well, what I thought I would do <laughs> is sketch them up. <laughs> now, so here's something we prepared. Here's earlier, something we that? prepared earlier. Now it comes the saw and the all. Yeah, no. <laughs> this is basically the other two. Now, this isn't exactly what they're going to look like. But these are the other two, just to give you an idea. So. Okay. Jump it onto the table down. Yeah. So basically, this is to give an idea of the three as they may sit together. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, it, it was pointed out to me by my head paintress, Peggy, that they look like something out of a, a children's colouring in book. And now <laughs> the more I look at them, the more I can see what she says. But either way, we thought it suited the, the way of getting over what I wanted to yeah. look at next without it being too detailed. Yeah, it gives them a good it's impression. It's a sketch, but yeah, I've tried yeah. to make it a little bit 3D. Because it, it, it can be a standalone piece as well, but That's it's just right. to let everyone know that it is part of a, a wider collection. It will be part. Yeah. Of the three. yeah, exactly. So over there, we have obviously C No, and in a similar way that I've just described with here No, he's obviously doing his level best not to see. But he clearly can see. <laughs> so it's a it's a bit half and half. Again, see a little. It's see no, but it's see a little. And the same with the final piece of the trio, which will be speak no. I had to look myself. Speak no. <laughs> Again, instead of completely muted, it's not. It's a bit like he's trying to stop himself from saying something. So in one hand he's going, no, I, oh, I shouldn't. Oh no, I shouldn't. <laughs> It's a bit like that. So it's basically a very humanistic sort of way of expression. If you're trying to say something, but you're trying to close yourself up. But if you're a, a playful, small infant. I was going to say, they're like children, aren't they? Yeah. You, you know, you, you tell a child not to do something, but it's the exact opposite. I appreciate it sounds very <laughs> convoluted, but that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I'm going for. It. That's my pitch. Yeah. An interesting fact, Matt, interesting which, which fact. I, did, I, I didn't know until I looked up on Wikipedia, is that they do actually have names. They have names? Yes. Uh, um, in the Japanese proverb, so Sino, which is this little fella here, is Mizaro. Mizaro? Mizaro. He sounds great, doesn't yes. he? Yes. Yeah. Okay, here now yeah. is Kekazaro. 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 Yeah. Brilliant. And Speak No. Speak No. Is Iwazaro. Hirazawa. Well, I think that uh, bearing in mind that they are actually legitimate, leg legitimate names, <laughs> I think we might as well call them those when we release them I think Dan as well yeah they seem pretty good but again they are apes not monkeys I know I'll have to keep saying that but someone yeah they are they are apes. apes yeah someone is going to point it out now another interesting thing is that I had a conversation with uh, a chap called uh, Michael Griffiths who's the president of UNESCO LLC and they're our 
uh, partners in the US and Canada who are very, very busy promoting Edge across the pond, so to speak. And anyway, when I uh, uh, muted the range to him, in fact, showed him a picture of this little chap in the clay. He actually loved it, the idea, but he actually said, well, at the end, what about if you sculpted a base that they all sat in? Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't done this before, neither have I done a range like this before within the broad, broader range. But I think that's a pretty good idea. So one thing I, I'm probably going to do once I've released all three, and I know basically the footprint, no pun intended, even though they're sitting down. Um, I could sculpt this base, they can be sold separately, and these pieces can be sit into them. So in, in fact, then you have a cohesive one piece itself, I guess. Yeah. And I think that I'll touch upon that. I think that's very, very good. Mm. You know, an edge jungle style yeah, base nice. for them to sit in. So I think that'll work very, yeah. very well indeed. It's probably a bad time to tell you that there might be a fourth one. <laughs> There's a fourth one, Dan. <laughs> Uh, sometimes I think do Is no there? do no evil. Do no evil. Apparently. <laughs> well, they missed that one out, didn't they? It's another musketeer type thing, isn't it, Dan? Yeah. The fourth one. <laughs> oh no. We'll stick with the three. I think I so. Think. Yeah. Yeah. Common perception. We'll go with the three. Well, do no could be sitting on his hands. It'd be quite cool. That's right. <laughs> Watch this space. So anyway, <laughs> hopefully that's given an explanation yeah. to the chimpanzee. Yes. But of course there is a third piece in the presentation yeah, that yeah. I haven't released yet. No. I haven't spoken about. No. I've released the picture on Facebook within the last three or four weeks and had a really great response, which is fantastic. But yeah, so... So I think, yeah, with no further ado, I think we should move on to the next presentation. Yeah. The chameleon folks. Special button. I mean, he could be here already, we wouldn't know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's a tricky piece to do this because of, the, because of that aspect of it changing colours. Like which colour to do? <laughs> anyway, we'll see you by then. <laughs> All right, okay. let's move on. Okay, magic yeah. button time. Okay. Okay, three, two, one, go. Hello folks, welcome to the presentation for the chameleon. Now the chameleon really is a subject, even when you look at them in a book, even if you see them on TV, they're very, very quirky. It's a quirky subject. That's fantastic from a sculptor's point of view because it means you can have a little fun with it. It doesn't take itself too seriously. And that's what I wanted to do with the entire piece really. From a story perspective, I think it, this is why I've also sculpted a caterpillar on there. So there's a softness to the piece anyway, from subject and the overall look. But also, we make pieces and we paint them. And I thought that right from the outset, I thought, well, this is going to be a piece that that's got, lends itself very well to different colour palettes, different points of view on what someone might like. Everything is an experiment, I guess. And I think with the comedian, just getting the, it to look as we wanted in whatever color was difficult because you could pick any color you like. It's a chameleon. It's supposed to disappear into its surroundings. Anyway, what we've done is we've painted this one or the release piece that that is. We have painted another two, but we will look at that in 222. But for now, we're going with this green and yellow marking with a striking blue line in it. It's a panther chameleon. And panther chameleons do have that banding going through them. The piece is three-dimensional, so I'll move it around. So if you look at it now, and I do excuse the really loud ball bearings. There you go, it's looking at you. And it is three-dimensional, so you have the other side as well. I have sculpted it so that it is hollow, so the light does permeate all the way through even though it might be difficult to appreciate in this lighting setup, but it does go all the way around. As indeed does the caterpillar. Now, as we move forwards, I have got other plans with this form of sculpture, this type of approach. And I think Dan and I are gonna to touch upon that in the presentation following this one. I also think for a 
a better view, maybe, on what it looks like in the three-dimensional perspective, we go over to Dan's 360 film that he's already completed. So, okay, bye folks. Hello everybody and uh, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed Matt's presentation of his chameleon. Uh, as you can see, he's still sitting here and uh, yes, he's a very colourful piece. Indeed. And uh, yeah. he looks very, very happy there sitting on his branch. Um, however, Matt, I, I, I'm a bit worried about the fate of this canteen. Yes, here. it's a story yet to <laughs> be completed, isn't it, <laughs> Yes. Poor little sausage. I hope he can yeah. scurry away over here. But yes, um, no, when I actually put the uh, picture of the uh, clay on Facebook, it was muted that I direct the eyes looking mm. at him in a predatorial sense. But I've left it like this. It would have been nice to do a piece where I you know, cast the eyes separately and people could manipulate <laughs> them where they like. But that's one idea too far. It's not an action but, man, is it? No. It's a good <laughs> idea though, but no, I haven't. Anyway, talking of story with it. Now, when I, when I fleshed it up or roughed it up, it was my intention to look at it as a project in that sense, that I could try and create going forwards a sort of three-dimensional sculptural picture, if you will. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, this obviously is a standalone piece by itself, which it is. It's three-dimensional. Go look at it all the way around. It's mm -hmm. not fixed just on one side. But yet, it, I can add to it. Now, if imagine, imagine I stylistically sculpted a tree coming up this direction so it balances out the comedian, and then you have a bush baby there. Or to your, to your left, I have a macaw. Now, both of these pieces by themselves. But if I sculpt them in a way where it has synergy with this piece, then it basically completes the picture. But not completes the picture entirely because we've still got an area down here. Now, initially, when I was as I said, sculpting, roughing this up, I did sculpt another little piece to go with it, just to see. Did you? I, di I did, I did. Anyway, <laughs> here's another one I did earlier, Dan. Anyway, I what? finished this little piece off. What a surprise. What a surprise. Yeah. And it's a little frog. Now, it's not just any frog. It's actually an African reed frog. Now, the reason I've done an African reed frog is because the chameleon's habitat is really in Africa or Asia. So I wanted to make sure that it was specific to a continent. So an African reed frog it is. And they also come in lots of different colors. Now again, just like the chameleon or any other piece, this is a, can be a standalone piece. It's three dimensional. It isn't just one direction only, it's three dimensional. But it can go with the chameleon if you so wish. I'll show you what I mean. So in other words, if you have the chameleon, you can sit this piece almost next, right next to it so that it continues some sort of story. And yeah, the caterpillar's looking even more. In peril. In peril. <laughs> no. yeah. But yes, yeah, so you've got that as well. Now, I did say African reed frog. Now, an African reed frog, before you go typing it up on Wikipedia or Google, they're very small, I agree. They're like this. They're, they're tiny little frogs. 
but I used artistic license in there <laughs> to make it a lot, lot bigger so that it works yes. from a visual sense. So yes, this is a piece that I, I tend to try and release early 222, but I thought I'd throw it in. It was close enough for me to finish, so I thought I'd try and get it ready for the presentation. Yes, that, that's right. I mean, it, yeah. the, the tree frog is for early 2022, but we, we thought we'd um, show it as a little surprise and for Matt to explain yeah. his thinking behind um, his, I suppose, was it a diorama, yeah, I suppose? A vision for the future, yes, potentially. No, no. I mean, I want to sculpt lots of other pieces as well, so that doesn't mean direct that I'm going to be sculpting next a macaw and a bush no. baby. It doesn't mean that. It means that's a, a process I'd like to look at as we go on. Yeah. But this is more or less done and in fact as soon as I we finish this presentation this goes off to a mould. I hope so because it, it yeah. looks like it's drying out. It is and it's very warm <laughs> in here. Okay and I think right. that um, that brings an end to our, our um, autumn new introductions presentation. Yeah. Um, I hope you uh, uh, enjoyed it. Um, we certainly enjoy doing them I, we do. I think. Yeah. I think we do definitely. Um, just um, a little note uh, for the stockists, um, all the um, images and information will be available on the Trade Only website from the morning of Thursday the 23rd which is tomorrow if you're watching uh, mm -hmm. um, this live, obviously if you're watching this after it's already on there. <laughs> and, <laughs> also, and also <coughs> talking about the 23rd, frog my throat, sorry no pun intended. <laughs> Um, I will be putting the pictures up on the Facebook page, the Edge Sculpture Facebook page, from today. You know, to today, 20, I'll get it mixed up myself. The 23rd! <laughs> just, just to continue, you know, the, uh, yeah. the knowledge of the new pieces going forwards. And also, like before, the pictures, the, photo the photography has been done, which means the shops can then utilise those pictures from tomorrow as well. Yeah, I think I'll, that's correct. I'll put a link for the, the Facebook page. And if I've messed that up, I apologise. Yeah, I said I'll put a link for the for yeah. the Facebook page so everyone can uh, go on there. It does get quite busy, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Okay, um, so yes, I think um, we should say goodbye. We should everybody. say goodbye. Uh, and again, thank you for watching. It's much appreciated. So um, goodbye, folks. Bye. We'll see you again soon. Absolutely.